All right. I say that every Sunday. <laughs> I can't help myself. Welcome in, everyone, to yet another edition of the Disney List. Kristen and Al John here. Before we get the show started, we just want to say hello. Welcome. You know what this makes me feel like? Sorry, I just bumped the... Yeah, I don't, the don't, don't Sorry. do that. Um, this drinks. music reminds me of being at the Caribbean Beach Resort. It does? Yes. Well, it's very beachy. It is Bora Bora by MBB. So, I like this. It's nice, right? I like it. I need to like add a little playlist of some of these cool songs that are on YouTube that you can use for free. It, they're, they're fun. It's fun. Uh, uh, thank you, Audio Music Library, for this. It's happy. It is happy. We're going to get some people into the chat. hope everyone's doing well on this Sunday. We go live every Sunday at an unspecified time. People are like, hey, Al John, why don't you go live at a certain time every Sunday? It's because life. <laughs> I can't help it. But we do go live just about every single week. We have not missed a show since this whole thing happened. Since we're not going anywhere, but we are doing stuff. But yes, every Sunday we go live here on Facebook.com forward slash The Disney List. So please be sure to check it out. You can also check out our show uh, there with our featured link, which is anchor.fm forward slash The Disney List. It's exciting. You could check out the podcast. You can support our show like... Lindsay, how do you know that's what I was going to do? Yeah, absolutely. I was just going to say, you know, and the more people that support us, one thing we need is, as people can tell who are watching us on video, we sadly have nothing behind us. It's just space. And you know what? I would love to show off to the people who watch us the cool stuff that we have collected over the years. So what I would like is for when people donate to us, it would be awesome because then we could get some shelving to put here so that way they've got cool things to look at and we could do a show in the future talking about some of the really cool souvenirs that you you can't get anymore that we have collected over the years oh there you go i'd like that i'd like that uh janet saying hey sorry bob is on you how bob's on on sunday evening too and it's like yeah we know <laughs> we can't help that we try to go on after bob but you know it is Look, we have a we have a show. We have to make sure we do a show. We got to make sure we do everything. Produce the show, produce the videos, get it on. So yeah, that's that's what happens. So hey, look, we're here. We're live. Thank you for inviting us into your home every single week. Whether it is through all the different video feeds we we've got going on on our Facebook group for the Disney List, the Source of Radio Disney Fun Zone Discord, which by the way. Uh, we're also on with Sorcerer Radio, as well as our podcast feeds. Now, before we get started, big ups to Lindsay, as we talked about, um, because Lindsay Marie is our number one fan and top, um, I guess you could say, supporter for our band, our band, our brand on the Disney list on Anchor. And you too can help by uh, uh, submitting or actually supporting the show there on Anchor, which is great. Because they have three different tiers that you can donate at. So anywhere from 99 cents to as much as nine ninety nine a month. Lindsay says the pillow needs to be a part of the show. Think, you can't really buy anything anymore for 99 cents. No, you can't. No, you can't. Um, and that's why, because she is our top, um, our top supporter there on Anchor. She also is the reason for today's show which is our top 10 extinct Walt Disney World attractions. So we're going to talk about that here momentarily. Another way you can support our show is through our links in the show notes. You can check out our Amazon links, our affiliate links. Every time you go and click on that link to shop for Amazon, we get a little kickback to help support the show, which is great. Uh, then the other part of this piece is the fact that you can also book your future vacations with Kristen. Kristen, where can people contact you? They can email me at themeparksandcruises at gmail.com. That's right. I also am interested if anybody would like just general information on like travel deals or cool things like that, if they'd like those, 
Also, hit me up via email at that theme parks and cruises at gmail.com and let me know because I was thinking about starting a monthly newsletter to let people know about things like that that are cool happening and with all of the other stuff that's going on, any important information they need to know when it comes to Disney Universal and the cruise lines. Yes. And that way you would you would get that in your mailbox. And I figured once a month is enough. I mean, you don't want, there's enough stuff that shows up in your email but so i don't want to be one of those people but i thought it'd be nice to just send out something monthly so yes, absolutely if people be interested let me know and i may i may start doing that for them so before we get started again if you're watching us on a feed on one of our partner facebook sites like uh, wdw after dark which is no longer one of our shows or castaway midday or dining at disney or whatever to interact with us, you need to be watching us on facebook.com forward slash the Disney list. That's where the chat happens. That's where we can see and interact with you. That's where we're asking the question, What are it, what is your top 10? What is at least in your top five in terms of Walt Disney World extinct attractions that we can talk about later on in the show? Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's get this show started. Production of the Sorcerer Radio Network. It's all imagination, huh? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. And broadcasting from the Tiki Room Studios in Music City. It's the Disney List. It's the Disney List. You've got to have characters that the audience, the viewer, the reader cares about. What makes a hero? What's friendship? What's the idea of sacrificing yourself for something larger? With the hope that it will be a source of joy. And inspiration for all the world. Disney List on Sorcerer Radio with your hosts, Kristen and Al John. Welcome back to the Disney List. We count down different things that you love from Marvel, Disney, Star Wars, the parks. Maybe it's a Mount Rushmore list. Maybe it's a top 10. Maybe it's a top 5. Maybe it's a ranking. We do it every single week here. On demand at thedisneylist.com and also every Monday on the Sorcerer Radio Network as srsounds.com. I am a lifelong Disney fan, Star Wars Marvel, and annual pass holder, Al John Go, joined by my lovely and talented wife, who is also a vacation planner, authorized vacation planner, and travel guru, foodie for Disney, author, Kristen from DiningAtDisney.com. Hello, Kristen. Hello, Al John. We have an awesome show for you. Not only do we have an awesome show for you, we also have awesome, awesome sponsors, awesome friends that are supporting the show, like Lindsay Marie. Lindsay Marie, this list is for you because you are a top, a top supporter of the Disney list there on Anchor.com, Anchor.fm forward slash the Disney list, where you can check us out on demand. So. Lindsay, the show is for you. The show is for you. What is our theme for today? We are talking the our top 10 extinct attractions. So these are the attractions that no longer exist at the at Walt Disney World. We pick Walt Disney World and you you can't do any kind of version of them really anymore. It is a shame. It is a shame, but it is cool. If you would like to interact with us very simply, do so on facebook.com forward slash the Disney list. And you can interact with us in the chat. You can also check out all of our other archive of live shows that we do, which is awesome. You can also check us out on demand there at the Disney list.com. I'd like to say hello to everyone that's chatting with our live feed right now. Michelle, hello. Hello, Michelle. Also, Lindsay joining us. Janet is here as well. Scott goes, I love the Trader Sam shirt, Al John. Spiky pineapples are the best at Trader Sam's. Hey, look, there is not a drink at Trader Sam's I don't like. They're all amazing. All good. I like no matter. the pearl. You like the pearl? The pearl. It doesn't really matter. The pearl. I don't know how I did that. I can only do it very rarely. <laughs> so we've been to Trader Sam's, what, uh, several times there yes. not only at the walt disney world resort 
but also at the Disneyland Resort. We've been to the one in, in Disneyland way more times. Way than, more times. But it's, it's like, been there longer, so that's like our, why. Yeah, like our home away from home. It's our go-to place every time we're at Disneyland. Of course, Michelle loves tr- the Trader Sam shirt because it features Stitch on it. Of, of course. Because she loves Stitch. <laughs> uh, Stitch actually uh, kind of mentioned in our list today of our top 10 extinct Walt Disney World attractions. So I wonder what's in your list. Feel free to let us know there on our Facebook page. Okay. Yes. Let's go ahead and get this rolling. And now a word from Yanni Alvarez, Spanish announcer for the Disney Parks. Para su seguridad, permanezca sentado y mantenga sus manos, brazos, pies y piernas dentro del vehículo. Cuida los pequeñitos. Este alerta. Quizás vea al conejo blanco. Hi guys, I'm Yanni Alvarez and you're listening to Sorcerer Radio. Keep listening. She's the best, isn't she? She has such a happy voice. Like, just overall, she just sounds like she never has a bad day. Yenny is the best. I, I can't love wait. it. I, I, I'd love to have her back on the show. She is, she is so fun. Talk about, like, classic Disney voice. You listen to the Spanish announcing, and she's great. Love Yenny. She's the best. So here's our top 10 list for this week. Now, I do yes. want to mention a couple things about the list. Yes. We don't have attractions that were like refurbished minor, like had minor refurbishments that kind of are still there. Like, for example, um, Grand Caballeros. Fiesta. Yeah. yeah. So that's per- very similar to what it was when it was El Rio. So that isn't on the list. Same with like Journey into Imagination that have had changes, but they're not drastic changes or completely like demolished and turned into something else. Yes. So at any rate, uh, we take that into consideration. Pretty awesome. Nonetheless, uh, we have a huge list. It was actually very interesting. I knew that we'd be, we'd have a good top 10. This may I don't know what it, it, it may be controversial to some as to what our favorites are, but once again, these are our favorites. Uh, yours will vary, of course. So we can't wait to hear some of this. So shall we play a little something, something maybe from an attraction that uh, is actually part of our top 10? Number sure. 10? And somewhere in the vanished. Terrifying creature waits to claim you. Warning. <laughs> Remain in your vehicle. The area you are entering is extremely dangerous. Proceed with caution. Pretty awesome. I keep on number ten. Yes, yeah, so it is. The great movie ride. What a great experience. I I, I miss it already well i miss the parks in general because we haven't been in forever but i do miss it what 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 section of that attraction do you miss the most of course i miss the aliens 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 i miss aliens i miss the wizard of oz i miss the chicago gangster scene which is great um the western scene if they blow everything up so you you can feel your face you know melt at indiana jones i mean what's not to love about it i honestly i miss it i miss everything about it I missed the end where you get to see all the movies, and I liked it when they finally updated it. Oh, I know. That was the best when they finally updated it. Yeah. What was sad is at the end, you know, you would only have one of the automobiles going, and I remember when you would have all three filled with people. Oh, yes. All pulling up at the same time to the screen to see that last part. Yes. Yeah, I I do miss it. I do miss it, but... I didn't realize for the longest time that there was an alternative to um, to the gangster scene because that was always the one we got. You've never done the movie ride with a cowboy scene? No, I have, but for when, the longest time, I only I always got the same one, so I didn't realize there was a second option. Yeah, so as we back the truck up just a little bit, there are the, the narrator, your tour guide actually is part of that whole interactive 
part of this ride that I like so much. So you have the guided tour, you go in, the footlight parade, you check out all the, the dancers and stuff and singing in the rain, blah, 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 blah. Then you go into the Chicago scene and then sometimes you roll past it. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you roll into the Western scene. Sometimes you roll past it. And, and I'm not saying that sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you have interaction, interactive elements because you always do that. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 gun, the gun fight in either Chicago or the Wild West is always pretty cool. And for years, I always got the same one. <laughs> and it wasn't until, you know, probably two years after we were annual pass holders before I knew that there was the scene in the in the western because <laughs> we always got the same uh, the same thing that's hilarious and prior to us going i always got the same thing so it was it was interesting once we started getting that and then it became more regular that it would go back and forth between the two you see when michelle booked her trip with you Kristen, she missed going on the great movie ride by about a month in 2017 that's what she said in the chat Yep. It's a shame. At least you can kind of relive it on YouTube. It's not the same, but once again, it will for forever live in our hearts is one of my favorite attractions, and I do miss it, and we've been on it multiple times. I should have worn my great movie ride shirt for today. That's what I should I have I should have worn. worn. Mom, I didn't even I put a Disney it. shirt on today. I've got I know. pretty little flowers pretty on my little shirt. Pretty little flowers. Look at the flowers. Look at the flowers. All right. How about, how about uh, what is this? Number Oops. number nine. There we go. <laughs> it would be the Skyway. Okay. So not my favorite. Not my favorite. Now not, this, not, not at Magic Kingdom anyway. This I really liked. Okay. So this attraction was called, because it went back and forth between Fantasyland and Tomorrowland. And if you took it from Tomorrowland, it was called Skyway to Fantasyland. And if you took it from Fantasyland, you guessed it, it was called Skyway to Tomorrowland. <laughs> this uh, opened on June 10th in 1956 in Disneyland. Yes, my, my first park, by the way. Mm -hmm. My one of my favorites. In opening day, so October first, nineteen seventy one, is when it opened yes. in Walt Disney World. Yes, and it closed sadly on November tenth, in nineteen ninety nine. And mm. then it sat and sat, and you kept looking at it, going, "What are they going to do with this?" Oh, I tell you what they did. It with just it. was empty. Yeah, and over there. then we found out it became stronger years parking. later. Well, yeah. And then we found out years later, it got torn down and was going to become, which it is now, Rapunzel's Toilets. Rapunzel's Toilets. That's a great replacement for it. <laughs> I miss the buckets, but it, de it definitely wasn't something that was high on my list. It would have gotten an honorable mention. And I do miss it at Disneyland because I do have fond memories of white knuckling it as a child going, I think I'm going to fall. See, as a kid... Of course, I didn't grow up going to Disney World. I grew up going to Cedar Point, Geauga Lake, up in Ohio. And so they had them there. And it was just one of my favorite things as a kid was, I don't know why, was to ride those. You know, you didn't have any windows. It wasn't enclosed like the reimagined gondola, you know, Right. Skyway that they have that takes you from parks to resorts and stuff that just recently came about. Right. It's not the same. So that's why this had to make the list for me because it was one of my favorite things. I was sad when they stopped doing it. I think just because I grew up getting to ride those in amusement parks that it was also then a favorite of mine at Disney World. Yeah, I, I do miss it. I, I miss that whole riding the buckets was cool. However, now they have the Walt Disney World Resort Skyway with a highway in the Skyway. <laughs> and it's it's good. It's good. It's a you know, it's safe. It looks great. You have really nice views. It and it's a great way to get around Walt Disney World Resort. We the the week they reopened cuz they literally 
had it on for like a couple days and Chris and I had booked our vacation and we're like, oh yeah, we're going to miss the actual opening of it. And they closed it down for months for whatever reason. It's like, uh, they just didn't get the timing right. Maybe some of the vehicles, some of them kind of ran into each other and now they had figured it out. And when we finally went on vacation, they turned them on like the day we got there and we're like, oh gosh, please, please let us have an opportunity to ride the buckets, the new buckets. And then we did. And it was awesome. See, and Natalie had been there the week before us and they weren't, they weren't operating. And she was like, just maybe, maybe they'll open them while you're there. Yeah. And then lo and behold, did they, while she was out there? No, they, no. they were, they, she meant maybe they'll open when I was there because we showed up the week after she was there uh, visiting and they were not operating yet. All right. There you go. Lindsay says the Skyway. She says that was awesome when I was little and I didn't have to walk anymore. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. It is a nice way to get around. Uh, Lee says I have Hey, Lee, by the way, our, our great pal from the great white North. Uh, I have old Super 8 footage of my family from this early 70s. Wow. From the early 70s. Cool. Yes, absolutely. You want to read a couple more comments? Let's see. Uh, Lindsay says, weird that I hated Peter Pan, but I loved the Skyway. Yeah, kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> but still, we love you anyway. Uh, Michelle says that the one at Disneyland uh, was torn down to make make way for what is now Galaxy's Edge, that she got pictures of Fantasyland Station before it was torn down. Yeah, the sky buckets. She called them the sky buckets. Yeah, that's that's what we lovingly refer to the buckets, the buckets, the sky buckets. So, well, all righty. How about them apples? I think now we are at number eight. So... This one also highly contested because I remember it. Kristen, not so much. No, I do remember it. Oh, you remember it. this? Yes. I told you we couldn't put anything on there. I didn't remember it all. Okay. Well, we do remember this. Um, I just said I it wasn't it. one of my favorites. Well, here you go. Here's a little clip. At this first. time, we ask that you please pay attention to this important boarding information. Everybody getting in. When the probe doors have opened, please proceed directly into the vehicle and all the way across your aisle, filling in every available seat. For your protection, all <laughs> observation team members are required to wear safety. You know what this one is? The mission. I'm asking everyone. To fasten the restraint, pull the strap out. Let me let me let me turn this down and, and forward just a little bit because uh got a little bit in there, but uh Want to make sure the ride vehicle is good and then you blast off kind of hello again everyone we'll be getting underway momentarily bravo 229 are you ready to initiate launch that is affirmative control all systems go honey i shrunk <laughs> Honey, I shrunk the uh, the whole ride there. Oh, this is Body Wars. This attraction opened on October 19th in 1989 and closed January 1st of 2007. Not a big, not a, not a big Just ride. like all the rest of the Wonders of Life Pavilion that sits there and gets used for special events and festivals. I missed this actually, it was cool. I mean, yes, it's just like it's just like Star Tours, right? I get it. I, I totally understand, but it's still cool nonetheless. But think, it's still there. And see, that's why I was like, it just re always reminded me of Star Tours just through the body. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think the other thing about that that I, well, I like, I like the idea of the wonders of life. Uh, it was probably uh, between that, maybe Cranium Command. You've never ridden Cranium Command, or you don't. I don't. Cranium I don't Command? remember Cranium Command. It was cool. Just don't say like the making of me. That was like a really. <laughs> it's one of those, or Food Rocks. You remember Food Rocks, right? No. Any the 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 fruit, the the fruit song? No, no, doesn't ring a bell. I know of it, but I don't. <laughs> I don't remember it. Which Man. means it may not have been there when. When I was there. 
Now you you went um you went your first trip what 19 December of 91 91 and then I went back again in the summer of 93 mm-hmm. and after that it was in 96 that summer mm-hmm. and in October of 99 and then I didn't go again until we got married September of 03. There you go. There you go. Then it became an annual thing to do until, until yeah. we became annual pass holders in 09. And, and until, until the pandemic happened. So here we go. Hey, um, uh, Lindsay says, I don't remember wonders of life. Yeah. So yeah, the Wonders of Life Pavilion is really bad. It's in bad shape now. It's been neglected. They've used it now. The Wonders of Life Pavilion. Uh, it was basically like a little, like a little greenhouse. It looked like a little greenhouse out there in the middle of Future World, uh, actually toward the side of where the uh, Odyssey Restaurant is. As you're uh, entering on the left hand side of Future World, it's between what used to be. Universe of Energy mm-hmm. and what is the international mission? Oh, oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Mission Space. Yes, it's the pavilion right in between there. Yeah, so it, if you blink and you miss it because they try to they try to bury it now. You just, <laughs> just a giant gold just a giant dome. Gold dome. Yeah, just in in need. I bet a lot of those attractions are just still sitting in there collecting dust. They are, and if you see some videos on YouTube of urban explorers that actually, you know, walk backstage to check out if they're still there, I mean, you, <laughs> I don't suggest you do that because it's against the rules. But uh, it could that get you banned for life. Oh yeah, get you banned for life. Lee says, "Wonders of Life seasonal as early as 2005 or so. I went in 2006 and seemed to remember it was closed. Yeah." Yeah, we went into the Wonders of Life Pavilion um, when we got married in 2003. Mm-hmm. And so right it, after that is when, right after that it went cl- seasonal. It went seasonal. So there you go. There you have it. So how about this? This is, um, I, I miss this this section. Uh, there's some things I don't don't necessarily care for, but I do miss This one here. Number seven. And you'll kind of understand why. That's why they like to come here to do their filming. Right now we're entering a section of our back lot we call Residential Street. Now, before you pack your bags and move here, like everybody says, I want to live at Walt Disney World, take a close look at this first house. Go to, go to. Not much privacy in that uh, house. 100 Oaks, 1,000 Oaks. Says it all. See, there's no insides or backs. These are facades. It's something for the camera to see, something for a director to use. And we can make it so magical. For instance, one time we brought in 50 tons of shaved ice, some um, some lights, some trees. We had Christmas a year ago, July, right there at that pencil. You gotta got love the narrator there, all the tour guide. Been used for feature films at one time or another. Look at the 1963 Cadillac parked on your left. Yep. That's the car that caused all the problems in the movie Ten Man. I'm looking for the rest of the the backlot tour, which is which is cool. But yeah, I miss the the old Hollywood backlot tour. But now, it is Star Wars: Galaxy's Edge. It is Galaxy's Edge. It is Galaxy's Edge. Uh, what was it? The uh, original one went back before they started making like changes to it and stuff. And you got to see those those homes that were used and stuff like that it was really cool. Oh, here's the Golden Girls. The home of their neighbors from empty nests. <laughs> we just missed the, the golden and then finally, girls. The last house on your left shows what our prom designers can do to make that home, give that home the look that the director wants. Anyway, yeah, that was fun. I, I the the back lot was was very cool indeed. And the once again, you had awesome cast members that would take you through the boneyard, and you'd get to see the spaceships and Walt's Walt Disney's plane. plane or Herbie, the love bug, which was awesome. Your fit, your sister's favorite. And I, I love the love bug too. And it was great to see all the different things that they would have in the boneyard, the houses. They would even take you through one of the production houses where you get to see them make all the costumes, which is really nice. But I do miss that. And now it's star Wars galaxy's edge. So there you go. Good times. 
Michelle says, I love the Backlot Tour. And so does Lindsay, says they need to make it again. Well, where would you go backstage now? <laughs> the, backlot, <laughs> the Backlot. Well, here's here's uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> this is our old Backlot. Here's the inside of Oga's Cantina. <laughs> You could take one of those Coca-Cola droids and, and ride, ride that around. Oh, actually, that would be pretty awesome. Take a Coca-Cola droid cart and just ride it around. <laughs> I'd ride it around for sure. I'm sure you would. I would. I would. So, Kristen, why don't you tell us about this next this next thing that you've got here? Um, I don't have any information on that one. Oh, you don't? No, that's not the one I have information on. Oh, Number four. Oh gosh, bless! I hit the wrong button. You see, without fail, it happens. It happens. Where are we now? Oh, number. Just say it. Six. You were number six. Number six. I can't find. Oh, here. Number six. I hit the wrong button. Here you go. Oh, now I can't get get the audio going. Here we go. <laughs> it's a live show, folks. This is Captain Nemo speaking. Welcome aboard the Nautilus. Funny, that's Captain Nemo. We are proceeding on a course that will take us on a voyage 20,000 leagues under the sea. Isn't that awesome? En route, we will pass beneath the polar ice cap and then probe depths seldom seen by man. So good. So make yourselves comfortable. But please, remain seated at all times. Here among the reefs, so you good. can see many familiar inhabitants. I love it. I love world. it. So what's what is on life? top of it now? Uh, Winnie the Pooh. That's right? That's Winnie right. Winnie the Pooh? Yeah. Yeah. So at least I, I think it's Winnie the Pooh. Or is that where... Or, or was it the old Winnie the Pooh location old that was Winnie paved? The Pooh so... Yeah. Is that new fantasy? Maybe it's Seven Dwarfs that sits on it now. Yes, the Nautilus. Scott King says the Nautilus. Yes. When I was a kid, I loved that movie, and I was like, "Oh, this is so cool! It's like Star Trek, but like underwater." <laughs> the closest you can get to this attraction is the Finding Nemo submarine voyage over in Disneyland. Yes. Well, that's because that's what it was. I know. <laughs> I know that's what it was. Uh, Just saying, the closest you can get to doing that is writing the Nemo. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. I, I love it. It's so it a. I think it's a pretty long attraction for one. So it was a, a great way to kind of. Um, kick back and relax and take in just an extremely awesome themed attraction. You're sitting there in the sub and there's water still in it. You know, it's, there's water on the sides of the vessel. When you come in, you sit down, sometimes the seats are a little wet, you know, for whatever reason, they're just spraying water everywhere and you get submerged in there. There's always things to see there in the little portals, um, you know, in the sub, which is awesome. So love it. Love it. How about this one? This is one that you lobbied for big time. Yes. <laughs> and uh, yes. I never saw it. What? The first time around. Really? Yeah, really. Man. So Number that's five. why. I remember seeing this. We have come here uninvited. We went from Captain Nemo to Captain. Oh, Eo. Go. Admit it to you. The original board. <laughs> To bring a gift, Your Highness, to someone as beautiful as you. What? You think me beautiful? Uh, beautiful within, Your Highness, but without a key to unlock it. Need that key. And that is my gift to you. So, let me see this gift. Be careful what you wish. Your Highness, but here. All right. And there you go, Michael Jackson in the band, and the robots transform into a drum kit, and and everybody in the crew. Hey, you know what? That is a really talented crew, because the whole crew is actually there. It's his band, and that's awesome. Yes. I love that. Being a musician myself, of course. So this was from 1986. 
and that uh, they had that where you could watch it until 1998. Yes, the first, the first, the first, run. the first run of it, where then it was was um, Honey, I Shrunk the Audience, yep. and we did that several times. But then they brought it back, returned it in 2010, and it was a tribute because of, my, of Michael Jackson's passing. Yep. Now. They had an awesome pre-show that they did for that that had George Lucas, who I always thought looked like a Monchichi in it, <laughs> and Francis Ford Coppola. <laughs> and they had that. And the last time... George Lucas. The George Lucas. I, said I know, George, I know, but, well, you know, it's, I love it. The, uh, the last time, the, the final showing of Captain EO was at Epcot on December 6th of 2015 and it has been closed since then I must say that I like I said I never saw it the first time around yeah and so I was really excited when they brought it back because I was like I don't know anything about Captain EO so I have the Captain EO hat I've got a Captain EO shirt yeah, it was exciting Love that. I always, like, Natalie and I would always watch that at least once. Sometimes we would see it twice on a trip. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's fun. It reminds me of when I was a kid. Of course, everybody loved Michael Jackson, um, you know, and this is part of that whole uh, thing about making cinematic music videos that Michael was known to do and to partner up with Martin Scorsese and George Lucas for 3D, 4D experience. Oh, yeah, it was just amazing. Let's listen to some of this music. It's too good not to play. And the, the choreography, this is like straight up Paul Abdul's, you know, uh, you know, kind of choreography that she's done. But I mean, and it's signature Michael Jackson. Well, she did choreography for Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson back in the day. Yeah, it's so good. So good. And Angelica Houston as the queen, which was great. And that to me, that's the original Borg right there. <laughs> that's the original Borg from Star Trek. Is Star Trek got some ideas. They must have watched this because the Borg queen comes down from the ceiling, much like you know, my, much like Angelica Houston coming down here. So that's a little something for all the Trekkies out there. But at any rate, um, yeah, what's not to love about that for sure, Captain EO. How about we take people to number four? This is a fun attraction, Kristen. It's yes. definitely one that you enjoy. Yes, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Yes, this I is love Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. A very, a very cool ride, but definitely adult themed because you realize why you're on this wild ride, uh, what happens to you, and. <laughs> When you're a reckless, crazy driver. Yeah, don't be a reckless, crazy driver, people. No, don't do it. Don't do it because you could go down to uh, Dante's Inferno when that happens to you. Woo, not good. <laughs> not good. Not good. But uh, I I love going into the little house. That was a lot of fun. Uh, Mr. Toad is just definitely a very fun, um, a fun character. And just the fact that you're riding through you know that little that little car of his and and taking twists and turns it's kind of like the kitty version of test track <laughs> <laughs> right oh gosh right but it's it's nice it's cool the good thing is if you go out to california you can still ride it out there yeah so gone but definitely not forgotten for sure uh, mr toad rest in peace we still have your gravestone out front of the haunted mansion so gone but not forgotten mr toad rest in peace number three okay how about this particular one and this is one of our favorites here at excess helping others seize the future has always been our goal it's a tradition handed down from our founders and carried on by current chairman lc if you know it in the chat we were, of course, extremely enthused when our market research group discovered the Earth. A world with so many eager customers is always worth a great... 
Right. I love the pre-show because very oh, yeah. foreboding, awesome stuff there in the pre-show. And people had no idea what they were in uh, getting ready for. My dear friends, you just witnessed a small sample of the awesome power of excess teleportation. But wait, there's much more. It reminded me of The Fly with Jeff Goldblum, didn't it? This was one of my favorite attractions. Let's tell everybody what it is. It is Extraterrestrial Alien Encounter. Yes, in the original Alien Encounter, the first version of it. And it opened on June 20th, 1995 and closed on October 12th of 2003. Did you know this was done uh, by Lucasfilm? Yes. So good. That's why, that's why it's good. That's why it's good. Now, why did they change it? Why did they change it to Stitch's Great Escape? Um, probably because it scared too many kids. It scared a lot of people. It definitely scared a lot of people. Another planet in our transmission depth. It must have intercepted the signal. What? Wait, 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 that's okay. I loved it. And of course, what could go wrong? Everything. It's not the little lovable creature that you saw in the pre-show. He, he was up, my favorite. He ended up beaming a huge alien that ended up stomping on you and uh, and getting its uh, acid spit on you. Everyone's scared. People screaming. Oh, yep, there you go. There you go. You get to see a little bit of that uh, infrared camera and the alien runs amok. You know, I it, wish I had a little Skippy doll. Uh, they should. They should have a little Skippy doll available or bring Skippy back in some other attraction. I liked Skippy. Skippy he was needs, so cute. They need to have a Skippy doll there at Galaxy's Edge and he's one of those little alien alien creatures that you could I mean cuz I do have the fuzzball from Captain EO. <laughs> I need a skippy one to go with fuzzball. You do need a skippy one to go with fuzzball. Yeah, that is kind of cool that you have those those little plushes that they reissued for Captain EO. Forgot to mention that. Yeah, I got the fuzzball one. That is so cool. Hey, if you're just now tuning in, you are listening to Kristen and Algen on the Disney list. We are counting down our top 10 extinct attractions at the walt disney world resort so many of them over time people love them these are these are ones that are sentimental favorites for us during our time uh, visiting the parks in its heyday um, a lot of them a lot of them we were able to experience thank goodness before they shuttered them back in the 2000s early 2000s so at any rate uh, we have one here. We are now at number two. <laughs> so what is what is number two? Number two is it is the magic of Disney animation. It was right outside of animation. Well, inside animation c- courtyard, yes. around animation courtyard. It's where uh, it got turned into the launching bay. Right, yes. Launch Bay or Launch, is it launch Bay? Star Bay? Wars Launch Bay. And I miss it because it was one of my favorite things to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm Same talking here. about the very, like, the old, not as over the years, it got watered down and changed, and you could bypass things and that kind of stuff. But originally, you had to walk in and you saw how they do animation. And then as you walked out, you had animators actually drawing movies. And the last one we saw was cast members drawing Home on the Range there. Yeah. And then from there, you had usually like a one character experience in the area. And there was the drawing class. And the drawing class, I've got, I think it's about 80 drawings that i've done yeah we've done so many over time and it's fun i love learning how to draw it was 
if uh, longtime viewers of this the show, listeners of the podcast know that I wanted to be a Disney animator or work for Marvel as a penciler for just growing up. And I used to love drawing. So drawing the Disney character was great. Watching the animators when they were drawing the cells, the animated cells were was very nice. You get to see all the artwork in there. And one of our friends of the show, Tom Bancroft, who the Bank, Bancroft brothers worked on Mulan, you know, kind of apropos as Mulan is getting ready to hit theaters, the live action version, but he did that video entry to talk about animation and drew Mushu. And so, well, and how Tom Mushu came to be and what Mushu almost was. Yes. It yes. was very cool. It was cool to see Tom in that movie. And we talked to him about that. Uh, if you're able to hear some of that show, maybe I'll go through the archives and find some of that, uh, of that interview, but it's just amazing stuff. 2015 is when they closed. Yeah. Well, it's very sad, but we do miss that experience. It was one of our favorites and it definitely was a Disney must do up until it closed in 2015 for sure. So Kristen, now that we're here, we're almost at the point where we need to reveal our number one, but let's go ahead and recap for everyone out there. What the bottom nine were shall we yes okay go for it number 10 is the great movie ride number nine skyway at magic kingdom number eight body wars number seven the backlot tour number six twenty thousand leagues under the sea number five captain eo number four mr toad's wild ride number three extraterrestrial alien encounter number two the magic of disney animation and now number one people here's a new kind of cityscape the microprocessor an entire computer on a tiny silicon chip. What you've just seen are the building blocks for the future up ahead. And while it may look fantastic, remember, it's all possible. That's right. And we ought to know. We live there. Come on, take a look at 21st century living on land and sea and even out in space. But let's start off at our place. Oh, so many fun memories. And the best music. This is what Future World means to so many people. It's Horizons. What a great attraction that is. And now Horizons is no more. Oh, what happened to Horizons? Is it Horizons that is now Mission Space? Or is it Test Track? Now, uh, Hori I'd Horizons is now test track okay world of motion, world of motion is, is mission, mission space. space okay yes. i couldn't remember which sat where i just knew they were right next to each other well there you go yep and a, a look is it we, something yes it is something city came to college for seven years and what happens she becomes a farmer i know right this just, just an amazing attraction all why'd she go to school for seven years i don't know I don't it's know. Just so, so strange was she just <laughs> taking her time to get her you know, four year degree, or are we supposed to think she went well, and maybe she's like me and got a master's? To, yeah, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe she's like me and just worked and went to school like you. You you finished early. I was working like three jobs, so I worked full time, went to school full time. So it took five years for me to graduate. It took me it took me a while because I ended up uh working at the radio station. Well, I was in college, and yeah, that was good times. And switching majors, so that also helped. But at any rate, yes, that was fun. Horizons at Epcot, the original, one of our favorites. Very long attraction. And if you haven't experienced that, you need to check it out for yourself on YouTube because that is classic Epcot right there. Absolutely classic Epcot. So, Kristen, as we look to some of the comments there on Discord... There for the Sorcerer Radio Disney Fun Zone on Discord. Why don't you go ahead and uh, tell us, a, you know, about your thoughts overall for all of these extinct attractions? 
there's a lot of them that I, you know, I wish they'd come back. Some, you know, I'm, I have fond memories, so I'm okay with them, you know, not returning. But some of them were really great attractions. Yeah. AJ Redfern on the Disney list Discord says, I was a lot younger when there were, when, well, let's say I was a lot younger when there were about, um, but I have very vivid memories of both extraterrestrial uh, encounter and body wars. I wish I could go back and experience them uh, again as an adult. A couple of others I also missed the backlot tour, including the facades for the homes and the walking part of the tour. Also, great movie ride. Rook Wolf says 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. My first trip to Walt Disney World was when I was five. I can still remember Mickey, Small World, 20,000 Leagues from that trip. Also, Toad's Wild Ride over Magic Kingdom, Country Bear Jamboree at Disneyland, the Woodway People Mover at Disneyland. Yes, Disneyland. Uh, that's a whole other list right there, gang. Extraterrestrial Encounter in Magic Kingdom. A lot of people like that. Yeah. Um, just like we do. The Backlock Tour and finally Tarzan Rocks from Animal Kingdom. Good call. Good call. You know, we forgot about the Pocahontas show at, at Animal Kingdom when we were coming up with our list. Yeah, we did. We did. Uh, there's so many. Like I said, oh, I we know, didn't have any, you know. Uh, Sarah Nagy, 328, says, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. <laughs> Wild Ride. Great movie ride. Honey, I Shrunk. And then Backlot. Jones says, Backlot, great movie ride, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Captain EO, and then the original Figment in Dreamfinder. Yes, we thought about that. Thought about that. Broccoli, Lieutenant Broccoli, says, Tarzan Rocks, great movie ride, extraterrestrial, Backlot Tour, Scary Adventures with Snow White, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Uh, that's one. Uh, we did put American Idol in there, or, or Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And again, the reason we didn't use Journey into Imagination, the original one, was because, like we were saying, there were there were so many extinct attractions that we moved the removed those that were mm -hmm. similar to what they used to be. Baby Donald says, "Horizons Rock, Love Toad, um, Disneyland is not the same. Original Figment was much better than we what we have here now. This is true." Original Backlot Tour was really fun and loved that it went through the working areas and who could, could could forget World of Motion and Dream Flight. And Horizons 1 says, Horizons, of course, also Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Well, I couldn't I couldn't imagine that Horizons was your favorite because of the name that you go by in Discord. But uh, yes, absolutely good stuff for sure. And I think we have a couple here on Facebook as well uh michelle suggests that we need a disney list show uh for disneyland and uh yeah of course of course that'll definitely be part of it once we were able to uh to to get going on the disneyland list i do agree with that we do need a disneyland um extinct attractions because uh, luckily for us uh, some of us actually do remember that and we might actually do a panel show um for that because there's so many people that uh that love that so we have a couple comments on facebook we have Lindsay. you want to read Lindsay's comment we'll have there? to have bubba on the show to do that yeah sure let's see Lindsay says just off the top of my head with all the memories flooding back number one extraterrestrial alien encounter two the great movie ride three body wars four horizons five backlot tour honorable mentions to maelstrom and toontown and the original imagination figment with the dream uh, dream maker i just love my disney love it too Lindsay. awesome well this is your list so so thank you for nominating us to do this list for this week uh danny edwards says one mickey's toontown fair two extraterrestrial alien encounter three the great movie ride four mgm studios backlot tour five honey i shrunk the kids amy huffmaster one mr toad's wild ride Great Movie Ride, World of Motion, Horizons, The Original Journey into Imagination with yes. Figment and Dreamfinder. Amen. Uh, let's see. And Jeff Davis. Happy birthday, Jeff. He has 10 here. His are one, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Horizons, Original Journey into Imagination with Dreamfinder and Figment, Great Movie Ride, Mission to Mars, If You Had Wings, World of Motion, 
Maelstrom, the original li the Living Seas, yep. the original universe of energy. There you go. See, some of these, like Mission to Mars. So classic. If, uh, if you had wings, some of those, I don't know that I ever rode them. Yep. Yep. This is true. This is true. Yeah, Jeff, um, I guess Jeff spent a lot of... Uh, he spent some time, you know, as a kid because I think his, he told he told us his dad would oftentimes do radio work and do remotes um, when he was working in radio. And now look at him. He, you know, Jeff was doing radio. I was doing radio. It's crazy. But happy birthday, Jeff. Well, and see, like my first trip was a high school band trip. So it was a whole bunch of us teenagers at the park together. You know, you're not with adults going oh no we have to go see this you know you're just doing whatever is fun and my friends had all been so they were the guides like i didn't pick anything it was this is what we're doing yeah man good good times good times <laughs> good times out john good know, times. I, like i know, don't know what you're saying good times no okay. no it's good <laughs> i i i wish that i'd spent i wish i'd gone to the park more but unfortunately I didn't get a real opportunity to check out going to the park or go to the uh, the theme parks until you and I got married. Um, I only spent maybe one or two trips, maybe maybe one uh, solid trip when I was um, in high school, and that was because we were in marching band. So we went went uh, had one of those. Uh, I guess it was uh, what do they call those magic uh, magic. Uh, Music days. Music days, yes, where the marching bands would come and play on Main Street and do the parade, and that was always fun to watch subsequent years because they stopped doing it, though, in the early 2000s. For whatever reason, they stopped having marching bands. I, I found my pin the other day from it. <laughs> well, anyway, hey, we had a great list. Thank you so much for everyone who contributed to the list for this week. Thank you, Lindsay, for sponsoring this list being our number one top fan and anchor and contributor and let's wrap up the show shall we Kristen if people are interested in booking their Disney trip with you how do they need to do that they can do that by contact me at theme parks and cruises at gmail.com absolutely and where else can people find you there because you're not only a podcast host here with me for the Disney list, but you also have the Dining at Disney podcast. Yes, they can check out uh, that at diningatdisney.com. Follow us on our various social medias. And uh, I do want to mention, if you haven't caught last week's show, you definitely want to do that because we are now monthly going to have a panel show called Happy Hour. And last week we had Tony Castlenova from Disney Parks Podcast and uh, Disney by the Numbers, uh, John, uh, Park Hopper John and Park Hopper Sid from WDW Park Hoppers. We had Kat Arcori, who is a correspondent for Dining at Disney as well as Sorcerer Radio. And of course, I had Alchon with me too. Yes. And of course, there's always Bubba. Yeah. But that was yeah. a good show. It's a good show. Definitely a good show. So thank you so much for that. Uh, please follow her because it's awesome and book your trip people can too. and if people download that episode you'll find out more about the people on it as well as what kind of things are to come absolutely hey thank you lindsay thank you scott thank you lee michelle um gosh so many people here in the chat to thank uh gail hello gail good to see you lee i mentioned um my computer's locking up guys so i can't say hi to everybody i can't remember who else was on the show janet um, thank you everybody for being in the chat and if I miss you I'm so so very sorry uh, don't forget to like share and subscribe to our show at the Disney list it's got all of our socials there you can also interact with us on Facebook that's the best way to do it at the Disney list uh, be on the hey Star Tours it's about ready to take off and you know what that means we're wrapping up our show follow me Al John Go on Instagram at Al John Go and we will see you oh I'm Al John <laughs> Before that, yes. you also have to check oh. out our friends, WDW Park Hoppers. Check out their podcast as well as on Facebook, our friends over at the Disney Dorks and Sorcerer Radio Fun Zone. Yes, do all And that. until next time, <laughs> I'm Kristen. And I'm Al John. 
We'll see, see you real soon. soon. This podcast is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company or its holdings and is intended for entertainment purposes. Shoutouts to this awesome band as 